week, presented by Lowe's, and today, the championship featuring that guy, Marcus Howard, the high-flying scorer from Marquette, against the fifth-ranked and undefeated Maryland Terrapins. Perfect so far on this season. How did they get here, you ask? Well, the Terrapins had trouble with Harvard early, came back to win. Marquette, no such issues with USC. 101-79. The final. Dave Feldman along with Dan Dockage. Thank you for joining us. If you've watched any of this tournament, hopefully you've seen Marcus Howard. 91 points, Dan, in two games. I love a number of things about him. Obviously this. He just makes buckets. His teammates love him. He can score any way he'd like. And he's with a guard. He is not just a guy that's a sieve defensively. You see right there, he drops 51. Now last I looked, they were great. It's Davidson, he scored 14 of his team's last 17. The Turks are led by Anthony Howard, who's got 50 points in two games, including a career high 30 in one of them. Big play. That's what Anthony Cowan is. Look, Maryland has been bad. They've been down numerous times, including twice in this tournament. But he bails them out. He bails them out every time. This is the first time Mark Turgeon will start this five this season. Cowan, Wiggins, Ayala is making his first start of the tournament, but he's plus 13 in this tournament. Dale Marcel will join Jalen Smith. Marquette, Howard will be joined by Adam, McEwen, Bailey, and the rebounding big man, the junior, Theo John. I'll tell you what, this gym is lively. Both teams travel well. There's one aisle separating. We could have a little something in the stands. If Maryland's going to win this game, Dan, they need a good first half. They've struggled in first half. You cannot play as poorly as Maryland has played in first halves and continue to win games, particularly against a really good Marquette team. Underway here in the championship in Orlando. Marquette in the powder blue. Steve Wojciechowski said he's worried about them in transition. He's probably also worried about Marcel being hot early. Well, you said this is the first time this lineup. The why is because of what you just saw right there. The bigs, the Mitchell twins, haven't given Mark Turgeon anything offensively. So he's spreading and he's going to go a little bit of zone. He's going to change it up. Everybody needs to know where number zero is if you're in yellow. That's Howard, the score is zero, being guarded everywhere by Marcel, and now McEwen has to launch a tough three. And Marcel, who had a double-double the other day, already with a three and a board. Wiggins from the corner. Well, I thought Wiggins would make that. He really came on at the end of the Harvard game, was a different player because he was more aggressive. Bailey with a three. So Brendan Bailey, the sophomore out of Salt Lake City, gets Marquette on the board. Braley only averaged four, but he shot that like he's used to making. He is a good-looking athlete, long, athletic, with a nice stroke. Jalen Smith lost his footing and a turnover by the turn. This is where Maryland struggles, half-court offense. Steve Wojciechowski said at the shoot-around, maybe the best defensive team he's had in a while in his sixth season. Mark Turgeon. Third time under Mark Turgeon, the Terps have started 7-0 and the first since 2000. You could make the argument, and it, it, it's not going to happen, but you can make the argument the Terps win this. They're fifth already. A couple teams have lost ahead. Make the argument that Michigan or Maryland could be the number one team in the country, assuming Michigan beats Louisville, the number two team in the country, Tuesday. Bailey again already hit one three. That one's off. Right, look at everybody run. Look at Marcel run. Stick Smith run. Ayala thought it was going in. He liked the follow through. No good. Theo John blocked by Smith. Smith already with two blocks, Dan. <laughs> Theo John should have just caught and gone up hard. You wait a second. That kid right there, Smith, is going to block. Right now, just go up. Smith isn't there. By dribbling, 
coming in. Smith's going to swat. Just go. Maryland seems so far to have more intensity than they've had in the other first half. Agree. But it's been mostly in transition. Smith turnaround rolls out. That's Sakar Anam. Marcus Howard yet to have an attempt. Straight, sw straight switch on the ball screen. Good Wiggins all over. Wiggins. Really good deep by Wiggins. And a great switch. Cowan inside. So good. Took his time, caught a ball screen, went just deep enough so that John couldn't get to him. Good pacing to this game so far early. Now, Anum. And Anum hits a three. That was really good. Gets his own. Bailey got in the middle of it. And what you do is you look shot, you look down, you look opposite. He immediately looked opposite. Found an open shooter. Anum had 12 versus Davidson. He's one of the best defenders for the Golden Eagles. Wiggins thought Cowan was zigging. He zagged and two turnovers for the Turks. Watch this switch. Defense? You got to switch up into him. We, we missed this, but look how long and you walk into him. You don't slap down. What Wiggins did on the shot was he walked into him with his hand up. You never slap down on Howard. There's going to be a three-point shot, or excuse me, a foul, and he's going to get three shots. And you stay on top of him like Marcel just did. John's already had two blocked by Smith. Goes at him again. That was Morrow, the transfer from Nebraska. And I'm telling you, that's a key for Marquette. That kid I thought was going to be terrific at Nebraska. He transferred and has been up and down. Morrow plays a lot of minutes in relief of John. Now the lob into Smith. Nice tip by Morsell. Yeah. Really nice. Howard turned his back. Marcel went right to the opposite side on the backboard. And him in the corner. Good box out by all the Turks. Marcel's playing great. Wiggins from the top. If he can get going, Maryland might end up being the number one team in the country. Maryland with another turnover. Boy, Wiggins is playing great defense. He's got a switch right there. Let him alone. If he makes, he makes. Bailey makes. It's all right. If you're going to miss a switch, which they did, you miss it towards Howard. Somebody else makes a shot, God bless you. Ayala going against the smaller Howard. Kicks it back out. This is his shot. Smith will shoot that. Top of the keys, death. Adam was in the right place at the right time. Now Howard yet to score, and Morcel pushed it. I think he did it on purpose. Because he was tired? I, yeah, <laughs> he was out of a stance. He wasn't ready. And then on the drive, I think he pushed him. Rear guard this. This is going to happen last 10 minutes of the game. A little high ball screen for that kid, Kyle. And we got a great atmosphere here today. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Dave Feldman, Dan Dockich, the championship game here on Feast Week 9-7 Marquette. Early on, we mentioned the 51 points by Howard versus SC. That was in 32 minutes. 40 versus Davidson. He has outscored the rest of his team, Dan. Today, 0 for 1. Is Maryland doing something different that the other teams did not? Yeah, I think they are. I think they're more up into him. I, I think that on the switch, you don't switch flat. Meaning when you switch to Howard, you go up into Howard to make him arc with the basketball, not go in straight lines. And I think Maryland's really well schooled in this. He has not forced it yet at all.
had one real contested one with Wiggins playing good defense. And you know what? Wiggins saw what you've been saying. Look at that switch right there. Here comes him again. Dante Wiggins Scott, back to him. The 24, the freshman, come in and switched him off to Wiggins. Uh, Wiggins will not leave him. That is great defense by the entire team, but mostly by Wiggins not letting Marcus Howard get any room whatsoever. I mean, there's a switch. Scott switch. Now you see Wiggins, number two. He's ready for him. So he gets right out into him with long arms and gets his feet moving right to the help. It's really good stuff. You cannot be flat or underneath the score. Mitchell inside with the left hand hook. Well, there you go. And the first hoop for number 21, Makai Mitchell. And he's cussing at me. Morrow down low, spun out, stepped on the bound, out of bounds. No, they call the foul, the hook on Morrow, so they gave him the hook. Mitchell looks ready to play, man. Mitchell is ready to go. This is pretty good by Mitchell defensively. Gets right into Morrow, and is a very easy call. Mitchell and his twin brother, Makai. Part of the twins, identical for Mark Turgeon. I'm going right into Mitchell. He got great look about him right here. Throw it in there. Also the freshman, Akeem Hart, 13 in for the Terps. Cowan, tough drive, and Anum fouled him. Mitchell came up, which brought number 34, Johnson, with him, which opened up the middle. When the ball's in the middle, there is no help side. It spreads the court. Cowan read it, went, got fouled. How tough is this guy? He's started every game he's ever played for the Terps, on pace to break Keith Booth's record of 126. And he's been great in this tournament. He, he's really been fantastic his entire career. He came in, Kevin Herter. Justin Jackson, they were the future, and he, although he does have a French Bulldog, okay, <laughs> has been tremendous. <laughs> is a French Bulldog different than an English Bulldog? I assume it is. I, I'd assume one's from France and one's yeah, from England. Yeah, but what's the, oh, there you go. Howard, looking for his first oh, yeah. hoop, and he gets it with a nice touch. Yeah, you can't have that. You cannot let him split a ball screen. You have to get shoulders together on a ball screen, switch it. Oh, look at this. Now it's so quick, and a great tip by Akeem Hart, the freshman. This is more energy than Maryland has played with combined in the first two games. It's also the earliest we've seen this lineup for Mark Turgeon in this tournament. Five is Greg Elliott, who's checked in for Marquette. Howard, a tough three. Jace Johnson, the transfer from Utah. Grad transfer battling. He's a seven-footer, 34. Well, 34 has a fantastic long-arm body, and he just out-muscled Mitchell to get the freshman to get the basketball. You got two freshmen right now, three actually in there, two on the front line, Mitchell and Scott. Jamal Kane in, 23, and Howard takes a quick break then early. 19 seconds, we got a timeout. He'll get a couple minutes of real time. I don't think you'll see him come out very often, if at L, after this. Anum's been making things go for Marquette. McEwen off and Jace Johnson's battling. Yeah, they got to throw it into Johnson. Johnson's begging for it. Anum traveled. He has Johnson. He has the right mentality in this game, too. Heck of a battle. You'd think Marcus Howard's first hoop would have been a three. Think again. Nice touch inside. Maryland up by two. We are back to the championship game of the Orlando Invitational Championship brought to you by Lowe's, part of Feast Week. Dave Feldman, Dan Dockich, thanks for joining us. Okay, so far, Marcus Howard has one hoop. It's not a three. Is that why Maryland's leading? Do you like this tempo so far if you're the Terps? You know, I like it for both. I, I think Marcus Howard's teammates are comfortable in this game. I think they're guarding. I think that Maryland has by far played with more energy, particularly on the defensive end, than we have seen, I, that I've seen in any of their games 
to this point this year. Marquette's a really good team. They've got really good players around Mark Marcus Howard. And Maryland's going to have to, for 40 minutes, make every switch, stay on top of Howard, never lose him. And it'll come down to the end. You got Marcus Howard, you got uh, Anthony Cowan, both out of the game right now. Morsell has been the guy who's really made things go for Maryland. Had his first double double against Harvard, and he's still in the game. You know, Marcus Howard's dad, Chucky Howard, was a fantastic running back in Indiana. When I was a student, he was a student. He was a tough dude. Ran hard for Bill Mallory. Oh, the Scott. The freshman met by Johnson with a hard foul. I like Johnson in this game. He's I like with his, a lot of energy. Yeah, he is. And it would, with, with Howard out, it would be good for Marquette to throw the ball into Johnson. Not that he's a great scorer, but he's going to get fantastic position. Johnson's a grad transfer from Mission Viejo, California, but played at Utah in the Pac-12. And this is Dante Scott, who can score a lot. He was the Philly City Player of the Year, won three state titles. And he's got a body much more developed and bigger than a normal freshman. He does, and, and you said it. He's got great rotation on his shot, hit a couple of big threes in, in games this week. He... He's grown up. Heck of a jump stop by Anna. McEwen slipped. And Johnson forcing P. He's really forcing some things down there. They fouled him. You said it about um, about the kid, Nemo. Josh Nebo. Nebo. From Texas a Yeah. He's a center that wants to be a center. He's yeah. not a... Johnson's the same way. He's going on the block, and his effectiveness is going to be on the backboard, forcing fouls and scoring around the rim. He's fun to watch, Johnson, 34. I wonder how long is Howard going to be on the bench here? McEwen, tough shot. Defended well. Marcel goes great right at defense. Johnson. Great defense by Johnson. Just put his hand up and walled off the rim. You got to get there early to do this. You've got to be alert to be in help. And when you're early like he is, you're going to get that. When you're late, you're going to foul. And Johnson is a grad transfer playing terrific basketball without a statistic. Marcus Howard back in the game. He's got one hoop. And it's a two, not a three. Legendary producer Eric Poseman just told me how uh, Johnson has four rebounds. My bad. Scott. Love it. Freshman is feeling it. And a great pass by Ayala seeing the entire court. He just fired a cross-court pass. And Scott, he's going to be, he is really good. No, there's no gun in college basketball. Terps by seven. Look at that defense by Marcel. Just making it tough for Zero to catch the ball. Johnson had it poked away by Mitchell. Now the freshman. Ayala loses it, then gets it back. And we got a jump ball. Possession will go to Maryland. Marquette has historically been very tough. I mean, I'm going back. You mentioned it. Jerome Whitehead, Butch Lee. Al McGuire. Oh, Rick man, Majerus. Rick Majerus, Hank Raymond. How can I forget Bo Ellis? One of my all-time favorite guys to hang out with on the road. And Tom Crean and Woj and Buzz. Dwayne, Dwayne Wade. Yeah, everybody's tough if you play at Marquette. It's always been that way. Big Robert Johnson is the center on their uh, Final Four team playing with Wade. Deaner, one of the all-time great dudes ever to play any sport. Morsell is having a great tournament. Yes, he is. He had his first double-double versus Harvard, and right now he's got the Terps up by 10. We're back, Dan. Daryl Morsell had 13 and 12 versus Harvard, his first career double-double. In the first game versus Temple, he forced the action. He plays very hard. Plays ridiculously hard. And when you play hard, and, and that's your mantra, 
Shots go in. I can't explain it. Shots just go in when you play harder than everybody. Look at it. Biggest lead for the Terps, 10. So much for their slow first halves. Dio John back in. Everybody stays home. Nice Smith jump step. Back. Yep. See how everybody stayed home? So Smith has to be able to do that one-on-one. -on -one. Three blocks for Jalen Smith. Everybody stays home, so it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. You're not leaving McEwen. You're not leaving Howard. Guess what? Stick Smith takes care of him. Smith high up away, and he'll shoot that three. Two shot. And a foul on Scott, who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, Marquette has done a nice job, Dan, of limiting Maryland to second shots. It was a point of emphasis at their practice. They said, we can't let them get any offensive rebound. When you look out here, they're long. And the culture of Marquette basketball, as we just talked about, is toughness. It just is. And... Other than Howard, this is a pretty long team. So they should be able to rebound on the defensive end. And you're right, you have to rebound against Maryland. Now, it's a smaller Maryland team in this game because Mark Turgeon has decided to go a little bit small. Bailey hit two threes early. That one rolls out. But Bailey hustles to get his rebound. This is a great game. McEwen. Off. It's a 10 nothing run right now for the Terps. Cow, it's so quick. Woo! Woo, is he quick? Wow! He just caught it, saw a lane, and just whooped the entire defense, including Bailey first, of Marquette. One of the things that Cowan does really well is he sees the court. He doesn't force them. Bailey got it up quick before Jalen Smith could get there. Good idea. And that ends a four-minute, 40-second scoring drought for Marquette. You know, it's interesting. Wiggins did not near get in the stance against Bailey that he had been against Howard. He relaxed, and Bailey took advantage. Cowan thought about it. Turns around, tough fadeaway. Howard with a three. Off the mark. Great defense by Ayala. Look at the hustle here. Jump ball because Brendan Bailey out hustled everybody. And I love this call by Joe DeRosa. So many times in college basketball, we see two guys go at it, and there's a foul called. Right past Bailey, right there. A little bump. Where's the help? Marquette usually helps Cowan too quick. Frank, an undefeated Terps, lead Marquette by 10 in the championship of the Orlando Invitational. Part of Feast Week. Brought to you by Lowe's, Dave Feldman, Dan Dockage, and Maryland is playing the first half like we haven't seen in this tournament, Dan. They have led in the first half. Only 18 minutes. They've trailed for almost 52. Yeah, it's ridiculous, really. And you can't go on living like that. Mark Turgeon and I had a quick conversation about his team, and he's, he's been on them. Like, really on them because of that. And he, they've been bailed out by Anthony Cowan. They really have. I yell a little bit in the first game, but Cowan late in the game has been sensational. They have not played this hard all tournament. That's how much they've been leading, by the way, in the entire tournament, not just the first halves. But they've been trailing in the first halves in all the games. Morrow back in, and he traveled. That was all set up because Anthony Wiggins did not let Marcus Howard touch the basketball. If you want to watch something fun, watch number two. Just stay with Marcus Howard the entire possession. And that messes up the set. That Woj wanted to run out of the timeout. Here's Wiggins offensive. Nice job going right at Morrow and kicking it in with the left. 12-point lead for the Turks. All right, now Marcel is going to guard. Let's see what Marcel does. 
Nice cut by Adam. And he hung in the air and avoided getting it blocked by Smith. And that was really good by Adam. He did not stand, as you said. He sprinted on his cut, and because he sprinted, he was able to jump and get it over Stick Smith. Now Wiggins. Smith tipping it. Battling. Balls on the floor. And a foul. So a foul on Jalen Smith. Hey, the 21st annual Big Ten ACC Challenge rolls on Wednesday. Notre Dame taking on this number five Maryland team in our first game, 7.30 Eastern then. 10th ranked Ohio State squaring off against Cole Anthony and 6th ranked North Carolina at the Dean Smith Center. Two great matchups on ESPN and the ESPN app. By the time we get to Tuesday, Ohio State and North Carolina are going to have their rankings switched, I would imagine. And assuming, or let's just say for the sake of argument, that Maryland wins this game, they'll be in the top two or three. Another missed three. Right, because Michigan State lost. Michigan State lost, Kansas. Duke lost. Kansas has a loss. Mitchell. That was influenced by Johnson coming from the ball screen to help. Hannah was out of control. And an offensive foul on Sakar Hannah. Seven turnovers so far for Marquette. Watch this. Watch Scott. He gets to the lane and just hangs in there. Now, that all started because on the miss, Scott sprinted. His first two steps were to sprint back on defense, and it got him in position early. Look at Johnson again influencing. Tried the alley-oop to Mitchell. Johnson wouldn't have it. Watch off the ball. Look at, look at Wiggins playing good defense. Just making Howard work. Howard with the floater. No good. Johnson, nice rebound. All right. And they call That's it exactly right. right. He's talking to our producer right there. He, all right, watch how hard he has to work to get the ball. He's got to work like crazy. And people now in basketball just are not used to that. And now he's off balance when he shoots it. The idea of guarding a scorer like Howard is to make him work to get the ball and always make him uncomfortable. And that's exactly what Wiggins has done in the time he's guarded him. So has Morsell. Two fouls on Johnson, who's had a great game, goes to the bench. Cowan, nice pass inside to Scott, who fell down. Howard, a tough hang. Great defense by Mitchell. Dan, they are not giving Howard any breathing space. He made a nice move off this. And that's a shot he's normally going to make. Right there, the screen comes, and Mitchell's kind of standing there. Let's see if Mitchell gets a hand on him. can tell. That was one for six so far. Mitchell spinning on John. Blows it away. And McEwen slips and travels. Same thing again. Hustling back on defense. The, the least taught aspect of college basketball is transition defense. Wiggins did it there. You run back. You don't backpedal. You sprint. Get your head into the arc area, and you can make guys travel or charge. Dan Marquette forced uh, Maryland forced Temple and Harvard into 15 turnovers each, and so far already Marquette has nine. And he's not taking the play, he's the best player. College basketball, if you cannot let the best player beat you, you're in business. Wiggins. Woo! Yes. Well, screen to screen, or he set a screen, received a screen in the middle of the court. When Wiggins is aggressive, Maryland is top ten. When he's passive and unsure, both ends, Maryland's just another team. Bailey for three. That was nice. 
Bowers not scoring now, but he's dishing. Yeah, Bailey set the screen. It's one of my favorite plays in basketball. Bailey set the screen. Har uh, Howard came sprinting off, drew to two, and found Bailey. He's got to go up. There you go. Count the hoop for Jalen Smith. Who was just waiting and waiting, and he was, he was going to shoot that no matter what down low. Yeah, don't mess around with fading away. Just go right now. Look, you get two feet in the lane. You just go up. That's it. Don't complicate winning. Dick Vermeil told me one time. Don't complicate winning. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Do it right for less with huge holiday savings. I say right now in the world's greatest podcast, courtside with Do uh, Greenberg and Dockers. He is always first. Two guys that I have on my All-American team, Marcus Howard and Xavier Simpson, our first team All-American guards post-feast week. I'm not sure who else I'm putting on it. We'll talk about it tomorrow and drop it on Tuesday. Is that when you release the... Dockett's new ratings, too? The Dockett's new ratings are coming out after Tuesday because I'm telling you right now. Look at this left hand with the left and count it. Telling you right now, if Michigan beats Louisville Tuesday night, games at 7.30, they are the number one team in America from unranked. Howard just gets whipped. You cannot let this kid get in the middle of the floor. You see the left hand, right hand get fouled. He's two veterans. You would leapfrog this Maryland team? I would. They will have beaten Gonzaga, sixth, second ranked. Look at this. Second ranked Louisville, if they do it. Eighth ranked Gonzaga, sixth ranked North Carolina. I'm not one of these clowns in the media that just, you know, looks at what people did last year. I go by what you did. Maryland would be in the top five, no question. They might be playing for number one. Bailey is keeping Marquette in this game. Another long three for Thurl Bailey's son. Former great forward for the Utah Jazz. Classic guy, Thurl Bailey. Really classic. You know, there's a... Jalen Smith got it in low and lays it in. Again, where was the pass from? Top of the key. Why? Marquette's a great defensive help team. There is no help when you go when you have the ball at the top of the key. It spreads the defense. This should go up. Elliott goes right at Smith, draws the foul, and will go to the line. All right. I believe it was 1979. Yeah. Marquette against Cornbread Maxwell as you see Wodes there, to go to the Final Four. Length of the court, Jerome Whitehead tips it in. Marquette fans will remember this. I've always wanted to ask Charles Pierce and other oh, legends of Marquette basketball, was that goaltending by Jerome Whitehead? If you remember the play, he hits it in the cylinder, and you saw the guy with the uniform, the Butch Lee uniform. You maintain it was goaltending? It would be in today's college basketball because of all of the reviews, and Marquette would not have had a national championship. I'm sure Marquette fans love you bringing that up. Well, I'm just curious because it was 77, not 79. 79 was Magic Johnson. See that uniform there? Yeah. Bo Ellis designed that uniform to be untucked. He was on the team at the time, a great, not a good, a great player and a better human being. He designed that uniform. Al McGuire led him. He was a designer. It is designed to be untucked with that Marquette down there. Like the old DePaul uniforms that Mark McGuire wore. DePaul cheated. Copied them? Yes. Okay. But Mitchell still got it. Jalen Smith off the court right now with two fouls. Wiggins against Bailey. And Chase Johnson back in with a big board. I say it all the time. Last two minutes and a half. Huge. Marquette can get back in this or it can go away. Offensive foul on McEwen. Kobe McEwen dropped the elbow. Cowan plays both ends. Cowan gets underneath you as a defender. 
He, he big steps, he moves his feet, he squares his shoulder, push off, easy call. Cowan has had a wonderful tournament through <laughs> I mean, you think about it, Cowan and in the Big Ten. Cowan, Cassius Winston, Xavier Simpson, every night. Brad Davison isn't in that conversation, but he's tough as heck for Wisconsin. Devontae Green in Indiana is going to average about 12. The big, or excuse me, average about 18. The Big Ten, terrific point guard. Ayala for three. Maryland extends their lead. This is the largest lead they've had, 17. you got to start forcing just a little bit if you're high. And it's not selfish. It's just what you should do. It's just what their team needs. Bailey's been the only offense off the mark, though. And a foul on Howard. So far, battle of these two guards, and you'd say Cowan is getting the best of Marcus Howard. Yeah, Cowan has, and, and Marcus Howard is being a good teammate to a degree by deferring, but this game is getting away. He's got to start going. And a shot fake after he dribbles will put him at the foul line. Howard has two fouls. He's one for six with two points. He had zero points in the first half versus Robert Morris earlier this season. Meanwhile, the senior leader, Cowan, gets his tenth point. And Howard takes a seat. Cowan flirted with the NBA, thought about it, tested it, and came back. Good move for everybody, including us. We get to watch him. See if Marquette tries to get it to Bailey. Instead, McEwen misses. How about Marcel? He made a great switch, pressured the shot of a McEwen, and then went and got the rebound. If they get it to him, it probably hit a shot. Ayala from the top. Bailey with a good catch. Elliott from the corner. Look at Morcel. Morcel contested out here and got back for the rebound. Six second differential between the shot clock and the game clock in the half. Anthony Cowan's going to take his time. Now tells Mitchell to go away. I got this. Shoot it from there, yeah. He had it. Does. He had it. <laughs> Bailey with a runner. Anthony Cowan, I guess, knew what he wanted, and he didn't need a screen. <laughs> we saw him do it against Harvard. We saw him do it against Temple. That extended three-point line means nothing. Marcus Howard has struggled in this half, Dan. 40 in the quarter versus Davidson. 51, two today versus the Turks. He's deferred far, far, far too much, Dave. He's got to come out here and be uber-aggressive. Anthony Cowan says, I don't need help. I'll take care of this. Chief Halftime Report coming up next. Time at the Orlando Invitational, part of ESPN's Feast Week, presented by Lowe's, and the Terps are up by 21 points. Partially because of this guard play. Cowan has 13 points for Maryland. Howard only has two points for Marquette. Dave Feldman, Dan Dockage, thank you for watching. 91 points in two games for Marcus Howard. So far with 20 minutes, only two points. How do you account for that? I count because Maryland, number one, has a really good defensive setup. They're switching everything. They're staying on top. If Howard's going to get a bucket, it's going to have to be off a back cut. There, look at that. On top. Fighting him out. Making him uncomfortable. Marcel was great in the first half. I love watching this kid play. Now here, watch. Switch. Cowan. I'm sorry. Wiggins. All over. Doesn't let him go. Now, Cowan. Unbelievable. All, well, actually all year long, mostly in the second half. I was talking to Chris, or Kevin Kanak. What's Kevin's name, the, the radio guy? 
Chris Knocky. Chris Knocky. He's been doing radio forever. By far the best half of basketball Maryland has played in a long, long time. And the best half they played in the first half all year. Not close. Maryland has been fantastic. But you got to play 40 minutes because he can go get 40 and a half. Howard can. Can Marquette come back and win this game if Howard does not go off? No. No, no, no chance. And look, if you're going to miss... Or if you're going to lose, go down fire. Marcus Howard has got to start forcing things a little bit. Can't beat him. <laughs> the same five that Mark Turgeon started the game with, and it's the first time this five has started all season. And the reason he started this five, it's a smaller lineup, it's an athletic lineup, and he really wasn't getting anything from anybody other than Stick Smith of size. So... Start my best athletes, my quickest guys, move the ball, get down in transition. It's exactly what they've done, and it's been terrific. Turgeon said this is one of his deepest teams in last year specifically. He couldn't take a guy out to teach him a lesson, Dan, because it would hurt them. Here he's so deep, a guy messes up, he takes him out. Well, there's not a lot of guys. Oh, oh my oh. Anthony Wiggins! Helen. An aggressive Wiggins makes Maryland a top 10, top 5 team. Look at Marcel. How about Marcel? He went and helped and sprinted back and got a piece of the shot. Now he's probably going to make the bucket here. Aaron Wiggins was spectacular here. I think he might have said, Anthony, I'm so happy thinking about Anthony Cowan. What a move by Aaron Wiggins. Aaron Wiggins, you can't let him in the lane. He's too long and athletic. And again, you never see a Wojo Marquette team that isn't in help side. Nobody there to help. A bit shell-shocked is Marquette. Three fouls on Howard, Dan, and he sits. Guard went around John, but he stopped him. Bailey was hot in the first half and continues to be hot for Marquette. He's got 16. Tell you what, he is six foot seven or eight at least, long arms and a great struggle. Only averages 4.2, but got more talent than that. Morcel, so strong. <laughs> he just bullied Marquette. He just went in the lane, and Anim had no answer. Marquette wants a timeout. It's a 24-point lead, and Howard is struggling on the bench. The undefeated Terps looking good. We are back in... This is the 21st annual Big Ten ACC Challenge. Tuesday, our doubleheader starts Louisville with the number two Cardinals hosting Michigan at 7.30 Eastern. Then, Trey Jones and number one Duke taking on Cassius Winston and number three Michigan State from the Breslin Center in East Lansing. Two great matchups on ESPN and the ESPN app. You love Michigan so long. Well. What's not to love? I mean, they have, I believe, the number one team in the country. If they beat Louisville, they are the number one team in the country. Anybody doesn't vote for them. It's just a typical media clown. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you know, they, they will have beaten Gonzaga, number six, number two, Louisville, North Carolina. Both of those, well, two of those on a neutral core. That's just riders being silly. Adam hits it for Marquette. Well, Maryland, if they were to win this game, they're going to move up too. They got five. an argument. That Duke's going bye-bye. And uh, who else? Somebody else in the top five got beat. Michigan State got beat by unranked Virginia Tech. Jalen Smith against Johnson. That's great defense by Johnson. Now a nice job splitting the defenders. Ayala for three. Cowan draws the foul on McEwen, who disagrees. You know what's great about Cowan? When he gets in the lane, this is for kids out there, he stays low. And watch him when he picks up the ball. He's always right here. He's low shot fakes. Gets the defender off balance. And then 
instead of fading away, he brings the ball into the defender. So many kids get upright in traffic, Dave, and you end up making a bad pass, an off-balance shot. He doesn't. He either gets a good look or he gets fouled or kicks it to the right guy just because he stays low. Cowan with 13, 14, and now 15. Pretty balanced attack by the Turks. We're up by 14. Anim is off, and Jalen Smith, nice box out on the big Johnson. Yeah, it was, but Johnson's willing. Morsell slice and misses the layup. That was that little rub ball screen that Cowan uses. Anim with a nice finish. He's got nine. All this with Howard on the bench. Little zone here. We get in the middle. Alley up to Smith. Well, at least Dan, which you taught me in the first two games, it wasn't too long. No, you want the alley oop. You want that's the mistake. Yes. You, only one guy can get it. If you miss an alley oop short, it is a transition layup on the other end. If you miss it long, it goes out of bounds, and Marquette's got to set up. Hewen switched it to the left. He got a kind roll. Yeah, no switch defensively by Maryland, and McEwen just went right at Cowan. Good offense, but they're trading hoops, and they're down by 20. Look opposite, you got a three. Foul on Maryland, crashing the boards as Johnson went down. You know what I've noticed out of Maryland? And now some words, and whoa, there's some shoving going on. The referee got knocked down as well. Yeah, Roger Ayers. Trying to hold Jalen Smith back. And now Mark Turgeon is yelling at Jalen Smith and pushing him back. Mark Turgeon just grabbed Jalen Smith by the jersey and he pulled missed, him away. He misread Jalen Smith. He thought Jalen Smith was going after a Marquette player. Jalen Smith was just going down the court. All right, what happened with him? Chase Johnson got hit. Oh, I see. A guy came in helping Johnson and pushed Smith away, and then... And then Greg Elliott... With for no reason whatsoever gets involved. Greg Elliott, number five, just needed to go back to the bench. But he he got going in this, and it was really dumb by Elliott. Chase Johnson, who's had a terrific game so far, being walked off by Marquette, the transfer, grad transfer from Utah. He's had a great game so far. Seven rebounds. Watch what happens. You watch number five, okay? So there it is. All right. Now, there's gonna be a little shove right there. To get Smith out of the way, Smith drops the ball, comes back, and now Elliott, for whatever the reason, has to get involved. And I. So what do you think they're going to rule here? They're going to look at it. They're going to see Elliott. They're going to probably call McEwen a foul, which they did. A, did. a, a Let's little see. shove, McEwen, 25. Right. A little shove on right the backside, right here. Yeah, for some reason. I mean, Smith didn't try and do anything. He's trying to get his foot out of there, and McEwen gives a shove. And then Elliott gets involved. The crowd is reacting because they're watching this on the big screen, too, here. So the rest will sort it out. We'll take a break. Maryland's up by 20. They're back 50 to 30. Maryland on top of Marquette. This is the Orlando Invitational Championship game. Feast Week presented by Lowe's. All right, Dan Dockage, what'd you... What they explain? Uh, common foul on Smith, 25, and then offsetting technicals on five for Marquette. Elliott. And five for Maryland. Ayala. Yep. Okay. And all you Marquette fans, you see it in slow motion, so everybody's saying, oh, he dragged his foot across the face of Johnson. No, he didn't. Slow motion made it look like it. Roger Ayers told me absolutely not. There was nothing there. He's trying to get his foot out. So, don't at me. <laughs> don't at me. That's your favorite line. Oh, it's Anyone's Marquette, upset with kid. you, don't at me. Everyone at you. 
Good pressure here by Maryland. Steal by Cowan. Now what's he complaining Elliot? about? What's Elliott complaining no, he's not complaining. Yes, he was. He was complaining about the foul. I think he's mad that he committed it. No, no, he was complaining. He needs to settle down because another technical, and he's out. Good move by the coach putting Howard back in. I think he was just upset Danny threw the bad pass. No, he's not. Let's see. I'm just tell him. His initial reaction was nothing to do with the pass. It was the foul. See how calm he is? Now he calmed down because he realized the, the announcer over on the sideline is ripping him. <laughs> I don't think he cares yeah, what you're know. saying about it. I don't think so either. Nobody does, except for Twitter. <laughs> this zone's been good. Aaron Wiggins cut off. Yeah, loses really. the ball. I'm telling you, if I'm Howard, i got to get this back and shoot. McEwen from the corner. Nice shot. Yeah, that's good. And it gets him under 20. But they're not winning unless Howard starts going off. Howard still with only two points. A good move by Wojo getting into the zone. Morcel left alone with some space. And the foul underneath. On Sakar Anum shoving underneath. Yeah, this has been a pretty physical game. I don't know about that call. Anum got underneath Mitchell, but man. One more foul, and the Turks will shoot one on one. Cowan, a quick first step. And that's why I like the zoom. It negated Cowan, Dave. It made others play. They went man to man there, and Cowan just whooped up and went to the rim. Not that Anthony Cowan needed motivation, but I'm sure facing Marcus Howard provided some. A thousand percent. Cowan hit nothing. Wiggins did hit the net. <laughs> But it didn't hit rim or glass. <laughs> no, and it looked dead in from our angle. And we can't get it to go. Ball not dropping now for Marquette. Which is a problem when you're down 19. All right, back to the zone. There has been no dribble penetration. No making two play one. Turn the corner. All right, there you go. But if you turn the corner, you make two play one, then the wing, Ayala, would have a wide open shot. Instead, they're seven. Can't leave this guy open. But Bailey has had an unbelievable shooting night. He's got 19. He's the guy. Man, is he a good-looking player, Dave? Long, athletic, great stroke. Only a sophomore. Took a two-year Mormon mission after his senior year in high school. So two years away from hoops, where he only played once a week. So his freshman year kind of struggled. And now in his sophomore year, kind of flourishing. This zone has totally negated anything inside for Maryland. Adam finally breaks the drought. The Marquette fans are pretty uh, it's excited. Also, hey, Woj is excited because he's seen his team battle. You know, they were dead in the water. And so when you're dead in the water, this is your third game in four days, you can go away. They're not going away. And this zone by Woj and his staff, terrific. It changed the game. There is no inside play. There is just standing around. And because they're defending, it has energized them defensively. Hey, today's a great sports day, and tonight on Sports Center after Wake Forest, Arizona, with Michael Eves and Juven Mahenty, they'll look at how Lamar Jackson did against the 49ers defense, plus Patriots Texans post game, and a Lakers Mavs breakdown. LeBron and Luca. Sports Center after college basketball on ESPN and the ESPN app. Marquette fired up, and Brendan Bailey, yeah. the one-man show. It's normally Marcus Howard. It's supposed to be Marcus Howard. Now, here's what's dangerous. Still could be Marcus That's Howard. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's dangerous for Maryland because they're cold. And this zone is taking away anything inside and any driving. 
And you got a guy on the other end that can go get 30 in 10 minutes. Look, just standing around passing the ball. Nothing inside, no penetration. Now Ayala from three. Off. Howard has it blocked by Mitchell and the foul. Thought about the three, elected not to shoot it there. Uh, and Marcus Howard is really good at this. Mitchell, obviously, way bigger. Mar Marcus Howard is so adept at drawing contact. Let's see if he uses his hip right there. You see his left leg go out. He extends his lower body into the defender. It's a great move. And there's nothing Mitchell can do against the experienced Howard. And Howard misses the free throw. 90% shooter, first free throw attempt for him. Numbers in the first two games staggering. Tournament record 51, tournament record for the total tournament with 91 points with a game left. But so far, not adding a lot to that total. Now, if you now they've changed sides. If you are Maryland, the shot is coming from this right wing. That's where Ayala has missed. So you got to put Wiggins over here on the right. Or you've got to put Cowan, but right now they're just matched up at 28 feet. Cowan, long three. Good! But if I'm Woj, I'm just saying, look, he made one. He ain't making five of those. Stay in that zone, score every possession. Cowan had 50 in the first two games. He has 20 in the championship. Nice he's away Cowan. by Cowan. With the finish. Cowan all over Howard is what? McEwen was wide open instead. Howard tries a floater. Get in the middle, take it right to the rim, just pop it to 24 from the top. Ayala went at the big guy Morrow and drew the foul. I thought Morrow went up with two hands straight up. Anthony Cowan has been the guard to watch in this one. How deep First is that? long three. I mean, is that 30? 94 three feet. feet past the new line. Right. It's pretty good, kind of dunk. Floor's 94 feet. Yes, it is. That was 33 to 38. No, nope. Terps are rolling. Fifth ranked and undefeated Terps are 7 0, and they're cruising in the Orlando Invitational Championship over Marquette. And Anthony Cowan, the senior guard, one of the reasons why. Dan, how quick is this guy? Watch this, and he throws the dribble out. So from that spot, he gets to the rim at 5 foot 10 in two dribbles. That's just a blow by, and again, when they're in man-to-man, -man, Marquette has really struggled to keep the ball in front and get into help side. The 2-3 zone has stymied Maryland a bit, but Collins had the answer. 30 in the first game versus Temple. 20 against Harvard, and 20 today with still 11:27 left against Marquette. You know, we said this earlier, Seth Greenberg and I do the world's greatest podcast. It's called Courtside with Greenberg and Doc, as you can get on ESPN.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And we're going to do a post-Feast Week All-American team, kind of an early season. I've got Marcus Howard on it. I've got Xavier Simpson on it as my guards, but... You might have to go three guards based on how this kid right here has played, Dave. He's been a winning guy, not only in this tournament, but all year long for a Maryland team that's going to be in the top five. Agreed. And more than just offensively, he's poked right. the ball away defensively. He does everything. He's taking charges. Yeah. This Maryland team's good. Let's make no mistake. They're deep. They're really good. And this is the best they've played all year. Yep. In and go turn face and go Wiggins yes the middle of the zone is hard to play Scott is a really good freshman you get the ball in the middle of a 2-3 zone you look shot first which Scott did down to your teammate or opposite 
and then straight out. And Scott did all of that and it ended up with a wide open three. Aaron Wiggins with a quiet 10. Besides that spectacular dunk, but his defense is spectacular. Man, man. So Wiggins goes to the line. You're going to get to see Maryland again. We'll see Maryland a lot this year. 21st annual Big Ten ACC Challenge. Notre Dame and Maryland. Then it's 10th ranked Ohio State squaring off against Cole Anthony and 6th ranked North Carolina at the Dean Smith Center. Two great matchups on ESPN and the ESPN app. Aaron Wiggins has been sensational. And it's amazing that Marcus Howard has missed two free throws. Didn't you think early on, Dan, that Aaron Wiggins might be one of the ones with the most upside at the next level? Well, people think that. I was talking to Mark Turgeon at Media Day for the Big Ten, and that's what he said the NBA guys who they have come to see. And he got aggressive yesterday, about the second ten, last ten minutes of the game, and, man, they are so much better with number two. The kid with the ball gets aggressive and throws it to the right team. Bailey for three. A rare miss, but he got his own rebound, followed it up, and a floater. Nice. Bailey with 21 to lead Marquette. S Scott pressured the shot and then jogged out. Long rebound. I think Scott's going to come out of the game because he didn't block out. And that's what Turgeon can do with this deep team, right? You make a Absolutely. mistake, come think about it. Now you got to turn the corner. You turn the corner, you make two play one. He didn't do it enough. Hustle by Scott. To there, knock aren't, it out. there aren't a lot of teams that have the kind of depth that Maryland does. I mean, you know, Coach K really only has eight, ten guys on scholarship. You get 13. He kept, he kept Scott in. Good. Took Wiggins out. Howard sits again, though. You have the feeling Howard would turn it around, but the clock keeps ticking. McCowan almost had another steal. And Bailey has another hoop. You know, almost is the, um, I'm sorry, Dave, almost is the worst word you can hear on defense. He almost had the steal, which was accurate, but he left the hottest guy in the gym. I'd find him again. I'd find Bailey number one again. We'll go to the rim. Give it to him. Right. You get your hands up. Reverse by Anna. How about the heart of Marquette getting nothing from their superstar, really? Woj going to the double fist 2 3 zone. Now it comes to look like a 3 2. It's really confused. There are shots in the middle, but you, you got to get the ball into the middle. There you go. Smith fouled by the rim. Jalen Smith will shoot two. Ball in the middle. However you get it there is the number one thing against this zone. It opens up the baseline. It opens up opposite. Smith had a double-double versus Harvard, 12 and 10. He's got a nice touch. We talked about that. The shot okay. looks good. Part of the Maryland balance scoring. He's not even on their list right now, Dan, with 20 with Cowan, Morcell, Wiggins, Scott, and Aiella. You don't even see Jalen, but he's dominated on the glass defensively and he's got four blocks. If he doesn't foul out, he'll end up with a double dunk. Because he's going to go to the free throw line. Scott now, out, Wiggins in. This is the starting lineup. This is the lineup for Maryland that has given them the most energy. Ball comes loose. Here come the Terps in transition. Wiggins, great pump fake. What'd he do? He got in the lane and he stayed low, Dave. He's six foot seven, six foot eight. He got in the lane. Johnson was there. He stayed low with the pump fake, as you said. Johnson went away. Wiggins laid it in. McEwen lets the defender fly by. 
Elliott, no, Jace Johnson, and one. Air How about ball. the heart of this big guy? Air ball. Always goes to the offensive guy. It is crazy how it happens, but it happened here for a three-point play. Good play by Jace Johnson, but the Terps are still cruising. Welcome back to the Orlando Invitational. Part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. The Terps undefeated and ranked fifth in control right now. Cole Anthony, a freshman averaging almost 21 points and seven rebounds a game. Projected as a top four pick in the 2020 NBA draft. You've seen him a couple times. Uh, started out great. I don't think there's a college basketball player, maybe Wiseman, that will be drafted that can come to a franchise and make a big difference. I just don't think there is. I don't, Cole Anthony is the number four pick. That's great. And he's really good. But talking to NBA guys, I'd be surprised if there's not a lot of Europeans in this year's draft class. Cowan from the corner. Great hustle by Aaron Wiggins. Yeah, and Mitchell got a hand on it. Wiggins came from the weak side. Can't Cowan gets Collins. another look from the corner. Oh, Morcell. Maryland out hustling everybody. Mitchell tried twice. Oh, Marquette ball, but you cannot fault the effort there by the Terps. Ball was around the rim, and the Terps just, including Mitchell, including Marcel, just went at the backboard. A little stuck on 65 right now. Marcus Howard's there been stuck go. for a while, there too. Oh. Johnson. Oh. Fouled by Wiggins on the putback dunk. I thought Marcus Howard had that one down. That's the first time he's been overly aggressive. He just came off the ball screen, had it halfway down, and aggressive Marcus Howard is a good thing for Maryland. But look at Johnson once again on the backboard. That kid has played tremendous basketball. Nine rebounds for the grad transfer from Utah. You can't teach seven feet, and he's seven feet. And Willie. And like, he wants to... Go down and bang with you. He wants to hit you. And how about Wiggins? Wiggins, let me tell you what, how important that was. Wiggins came out of nowhere and fouled Johnson. Johnson was going dunking for two points. Instead, he only gets one. Just a little hustle. Wiggins in the corner. They can't make nothing. Go get fouled. Howard for three. Johnson battling again. Mitchell's played well. Mitchell's played really well. Howard certainly has had to work harder, but those were shots, Dan, that have been falling. They're just not today. Shot down opposite. There's your three. Can't make it. Bailey's been the hot guy. Continues to be. 27 for Brendan Bailey. We have a ball game. Nobody is making anything for Maryland. And you got the nation's leading scorer who's going to make one, and Bailey who is making everything. We got a ball game. It was 25 at one point. It's now 12. I hope for Marquette and Bailey's sake this is a coming out kind of a deal because he is long, athletic, and uber skilled, you would think. That a kid like Bailey, Dave, I don't know. He was 4 of 14 on threes coming in. You would think he would be like a 12 to 18 point a game score, 15 points a game, not four and a half. Good for him. This is the closest this game has been, Dan, since 28-17 with four minutes left in the first half. Yeah, and this has a, a bad feel right now for Maryland. They need to get Cowan a shot or they need to get something on the rim. Look at Bailey. He's got Howard-type numbers versus the rest of the team. 27 compared to 26. Good for him. Really, I mean, you think about it. Howard struggling. You're one stop away from getting this under double digits and all the momentum. And just when you think you are, Morcell hits a big shot. It was really good. They put Morcell in a short corner, which doesn't happen very often with a guard. Marcel's guard hard. Boy, I love that kid. 
Morcell for three. Johnson with another rebound. You've got to jump, Howard. Here. Nothing right going for Howard. Right on line. In and out or dead on short. One for 11 from the field. 0 for 7 from 3. Well, if you can get someone in the right corner, you're going to get a jump shot here. Marcel switches sides. Nice pass. That's a look away to Mitchell. That's coaching. That is. I'm telling you, because they have not had Marcel in the corner all game. Annam comes right back for Marquette. Sakar Annam with 16. Marcel hasn't moved. There he is. And Johnson got there late and fouled him. <laughs> he's just, he's literally standing in the short corner, forcing Johnson to play two people. And Mitchell made a great pass to Marcel, who's strong enough off two feet to go try to dunk. Him. He did not move. This is a great pass. And it's forcing seven foot, 250, to play two people. And it's just too difficult. Johnson. So Morcell goes to the free throw line. He's already got double digit points, 12 and 8 rebounds. He had a double double versus Harvard. It's a couple boards to have another one. That double double versus Harvard was the first of his career. He'll have a lot more. Could jump a little too. 40 inches. <laughs> he missed that free throw. He looked at the bucket to see if the bucket was slanted. Good for him. Back up to 14, the lead for the Turks. Well, if I'm Howard, I, he can get by Marcel. I think he's got to get to the foul. Look at how Marcel's at the top of the key. He's playing a little James Harden defense behind him. Annam defended well by Marcel, but a better shot. Between Annam and Bailey, this is a bit of a coming out deal. Late in the game. What you're trying to do, if you're Marquette, is get a tip, get a deflection. As soon as the ball gets in the scoring area, just get a deflection. What was that left corner I told you about? You can't let that happen. Now, uh, left corner is open. Uh, the defender is rising up too high. It's been there. And it was the defender. He's been way, way, way too far up. Aaron Wiggins with 15. A foul on Mitchell, which Mark Turgeon said, we don't need a foul. We're up 73-58. Less than four to play. Terps are still perfect and looking to improve. We are back. That's the championship trophy of the Orlando Invitational. Maryland Dan has won 32 preseason tournaments. Twelve times they've been a runner-up. Their last preseason tournament title, the Barclays in 2016. It appears they will win for the 33rd time if they hold on here against Marquette. Um, my partner said that, not me. Because Marcus Howard could go nuts I said here. if they hold on. Oh, I, I said if. Said it appears they will. Well, it, it does appear. <laughs> it does right now. You're right. I'm not saying it's a foregone. It's going to be a 13-point game. Right. Because he's not missing these two. I'm not saying it's over. No, I don't. But... Do you agree that in what we've watched Maryland three times, three boom, 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 do you agree that an aggressive Wiggins is a total difference maker for oh, this yeah. team? And defensively, he's yeah. great. Right. He's so long. That's and as plays much so as anything. hard. Yeah. And between him and Morcell, you have two great stoppers. And you know what? Cowan isn't bad. No. To guard your third perimeter guy, right. you know. A little trap. All right, got to get in the middle. Lead is 13. Smith in there, you can throw it up. There it is. Throw it up in the air. Look down. Do it again. Look down. Smith going at the bigger Johnson. Look at Morcell battling everybody. What hustle. Man, that is so good. If you don't like Morcell, you don't like people. That dude just plays hard. 
got nine rebounds. And look, he's still sneaking along the baseline again. And then they leave him open. What a great adjustment by the staff of Maryland. I mean, what a great adjustment. They were struggling against his own, and they just put Marcel in a short corner. Maryland crowd here in Orlando getting louder. Decent Terp contingency came down from College Park, Maryland. Yeah, really good. I'm going to be there Saturday. I can't wait. Shot down. Nice pass. So, Marcel to Jalen Smith. You know, Marcel's been the MVP in his last 10 minutes. I agree. He or Cowan. He, Cowan, or Coach Turgeon and his staff by putting Marcel there, knowing that he's comfortable playing on the baseline against his own. Terps are good. I'm telling you, they're top three good. This is the best they've looked no by doubt. far. Without question. Elliot. No. And Cowan out hustles everybody. And Cowan lays it in. Timeout Marquette. This is energy we haven't seen from them All from beginning to end throughout this tournament. No question. This has been fantastic by Maryland. Maryland on both ends. And Dave, you and I have watched, right? Right from the get-go. That's a terrific pass against the zone. And the dunk. look at Marcel's enthusiasm. But this started, Dave, right from the get-go. And I believe this. I believe Cowan and Marcel came out tired of hearing about Marcus Howard, right? He's averaging 45 in two games. They know this is a senior, this kid Cowan. He wants to step up against the best. There's NBA guys here, his own team. And you know what? Cowan has been the most valuable player this entire tournament. And Morcell's been right behind him. Right there. No question about it. Morcell, I thought, was the one determined guy against Harvard when they were really struggling. Right, kept forcing the action. Yes, and the same thing against Temple. Temple's really good. You'll see it later on on our networks. He's really good. They're really good. Excuse me. A reminder, the 21st annual Big Ten ACC Challenge. Tuesday, our doubleheader starts in Louisville with the number two Cardinals hosting Michigan at 7.30. Then, Trey Jones and number one Duke taking on Cassius Winston and number three Michigan State from the Breslin Center in East Lansing. Two great matchups on ESPN and the ESPN app. No Cassius Stanley for Duke. He is a terrific athlete, really good player. Michigan State won two in a row after a loss to Virginia Tech. I'm telling you, Michigan wins that game. They are going to be, if any of these media folks know anything about basketball, they're going to be voted the number one team in the country. Should be. From unranked to number one. Unprecedented. They will be in the Dockage rating system. There's no question. Even though the ratings for the Dockage ratings will be Tuesday night, for the AP it will be like Monday. Look Howard Cowan loses again. it. Just a tough afternoon for Marcus Howard. Howard got his hand on that. I still love Marcus Howard. I love the kid. Oh, I love how he plays. Yeah. It's just been a tough night. Tough yeah. day. Tough day. And Maryland is really that good. They are that good. Because one of the reasons is that kid there is that tough. Maryland has never been known as the toughest crew, right? Talented. Morcell and this crew is tough. Really tough. He has 17. Annam comes back. Morcell's a Baltimore kid. Baltimore kids are tough. I'm a believer. The Terps are going to improve to 8 and 0. Oh. Kid with the ball. Anthony Cowan. Is he your MVP? Yeah, or is Morcel? No, he's Cowan. Yeah, he's been the guy at the end of the first two games. In this game, Morcel and Coach Turgeon. Why not? Why wouldn't it happen? Hey, Ayala, remember the first game? They were going to lose or come right down to the wire. And yep. Ayala made plays as the point guard. Fantastic effort today by Maryland. Ball tipped out of bounds. If Maryland can get that kind of energy out of number two, Wiggins, all the time. 
as good a team as there is in the country. Because they're going to bring it from Marcel. You and I have seen that, Dave. And they're going to get it from Kyle, and we've seen that. And I yell. And that'll do it. Aaron Wiggins is excited. So is Jalen Smith. A convincing 21-point win by the Terps. Another double-double for Morsell. And an 8-0 start for Mark Turgeon as the Terrapins win their 33rd preseason tournament. Their last, the Barclays, in 2016. Cowan had 22. Wiggins had 15. Morsell had 17. Hart gave them great minutes. The Mitchell brothers gave them good minutes. Dante Scott was good. And the marquee guard matchup, Anthony Cowan Jr. had 22 points. And Marcus Howard finished with just six. After scoring 91 in two games, only six on one of 12 from the field. 0 for six from three. Four of six from the free throw line and four assists. Wow, what a win for the Maryland Terpins. Jalen Smith deciding to give piggyback rides to Morsell. Why wouldn't they? This was a really, really important win for a team that, even though they were undefeated, had not been happy with the way they were playing. And now they are. Let's go over to my partner, Dan, with the coach. Dan. I'm here with Coach Turgeon. Smaller lineup to start the half or start the game gave you great energy, didn't it? Yeah, you know, I knew my guys were fired up for this one. Um, not to take it away from anybody that we played. The guys coming off 51 points. Uh, our guys love a challenge. They stepped up. I thought our defense uh, was, from, was remarkable the whole game, except when we let our shots affect us against the zone. We didn't run back a couple times. but. Defensively, we were at a high level. I'm going to stay with offense for just a second. You, after a timeout, you're struggling against the zone. You put Marcel in a little bit of a short corner. Yeah. My man didn't move, and he made every play. Yeah, we had we had three different zone offenses. I thought our zone offense was terrific. We just missed wide open right. shots. And I kept telling the guys that, and I was just waiting for us to put two or three together. So Daryl made some good plays in there. He's comfortable. He's done that for three years for us. So. Uh, you know, our veteran guys were really good today. You win the game. You're a top five team. You have league play Saturday. Yeah, what crazy. did you learn this week? I learned a lot. Um, we, we, we built some depth. That was the best depth we've had. First half, our bench was terrific. Akeem Hart was terrific. The Twins were terrific. Dante Scott was terrific in both halves. So we, we built some depth, which was great. Uh, we kind of figured ourselves out a little bit uh, as we went. We're moving the ball better. And then defensively, I just thought we got better as the tournament went on. Last thing, I thought Wiggins was terrific defensively, and I thought Cowan was terrific defensively. They didn't miss a switch, and they were up in on when they switched. Yeah. They were right up in them. And don't forget about Marcel. He, he was, was pretty terrific. good, too. Yeah, so, yeah we, uh, we've been working on switching a lot, and I thought I was going to have to do it in the first couple games, but it actually worked out for us to do it today, and our guys bought into it. And I, I, It could be in the end our best defense. We'll see. But uh, guys were terrific. Congrats, Coach. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Anthony Cowan, I don't know if they've announced it, but you're my MVP, so that's all that really matters. Hey, I want to talk to you about the defensive plan and how you guys didn't really miss a switch on Marcus Howard. Everybody can say what they want about me, but this dude right here needs to get all the credit, get a lot of the credit. He don't get as much credit as he is as a defender, and he really showed it out today. And the whole term nation, we all appreciate him, and we should all give him a hand of applause. All right, let's talk to you. You hear a lot about Marcus Howard, right? And you're not the kind of guy that backs down from it. How determined were you? How personal was it for you? Uh, I, I'm a winner. At the end of the day, I, I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. Um, Coach Turgeon challenged me. Anthony I captain challenged me, told, told me shut him down. Um, I just did my best. It, it, was, it was everybody, though. The guards was there for me. They was in gaps. They was in help for me. The big show hard on the screen. So it was a, it was a full team effort. But I, I, I accepted the challenge, and I was just trying to do anything to win it up. Coach puts you in the short corner against the zone, and quite frankly, it changed the zone. You're getting good looks, but nobody was making nothing. Pretty comfortable playing inside, aren't you? Yeah, yes. Uh, early, I was rushing. Anthony told me slow down. The coaches, I went to the best. They told me to slow down, just probe. 
And when I got in the zone, I was on the baseline. I just probed, tried to look for others. Uh, and, and once I, I looked for others, the others scored. The defense played off me, and I just took my shot. Well, you did a great job. I, I got to go back to you one second. You're a senior. You're playing against a guy that's averaging 45 and a half points. Was it a little personal to you, or are you too nice a kid to admit that? Personal, for sure. Okay. It's definitely personal. <laughs> it's definitely personal, but at the end of the day, it's all about the team. It's not a one-on-one -on -one battle. It's everybody, it's everybody back here. It's the whole ever everybody. So, no, I just want to make sure I did whatever I had to do to, for my team to win. All right, last thing. Either one of you can answer. The slow starts have been all year. The first halves have been slow. How much did you talk about it, smaller lineup? How much did you come out and say, look, this is not happening this time? Uh, it's been something that everybody's been talking about. Uh, I think today we kind of figured it out. Uh, Came out aggressive, came out sharing the ball. We always talk about being selfless as a team. So we just came out sharing the ball, getting everybody involved. I think everybody got touches. Everybody felt confident and comfortable, and we just kept rolling. Is it easier to play with a smaller lineup for you guys? Uh, we just got to adjust. Uh, whatever coach sees, that's what that's the kind of lineup he's going to put out today. Uh, he saw that we was able to switch a little bit, so the, show, the small lineup worked out for us, but any game can change. Hey, thanks, guy. Great. It was fun watching you for all three games. Thanks, guys. What a win for the Maryland Terrapins. Champs in Orlando. Our final score, 84-63. Maryland, the Terps improved to 8-0. Cowan, Wiggins, Morcel, all with double-figure. Wiggins, Morcel.